1895, a man took a picture of a hand. This hand picture was so mind-boggling that he won a Nobel Prize, and it changed the world. His name? Wilhelm Röntgen. And I present to you the first medical image ever taken. This is the world's first x-ray. This may not look very impressive to you today, but at the time it was genius, because this was the first time we could look inside of the human body without having to slice someone open. And indeed, medical imaging has changed the face of medicine. In the last hundred years since Röntgen, imaging still represents one of the fastest growing sources of medical data. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have gotten a mammogram, a CAT scan, an MRI, an X-ray? Can I see by a show of hands, please? That's incredible, because it seems that almost everyone here has benefited from medical imaging technology in some way or another. You see, we began to realize that imaging can sometimes reveal a disease even before you feel it. And for diseases like cancer, the earlier we diagnose, the more likely you'll survive. This is why we started screening people who exhibit no signs or symptoms of disease. Pap smears, mammograms, colonoscopies, all examples of screening tests that are recommended to everyone at certain ages. We know that diagnosing a disease early saves lives, it reduces treatment costs, and it reduces so much patient suffering. Unfortunately, though, most diseases are still diagnosed at advanced stages. You see, the problem with detecting these diseases early is that as you turn back the clock, visible evidence of disease becomes smaller and smaller until it vanishes before the naked eye. So realistically, how early can we detect these diseases? There's hope, because it turns out that there's an invisible side to imaging. Small changes that your eyes can't see still exist. And in my research, I've shown that these hidden patterns can sometimes be decoded with the help of a computer. And sometimes, these patterns contain secrets about the imminence of disease that we never knew. So, let me give you an example. Osteoarthritis is one of those diseases that we can't detect until the damage has been done. In this room, more than one in 10 of us will develop osteoarthritis in our knee. This is the disease in which the thin cushion of cartilage between two bones falls apart, causing bone to grind painfully on bone. Oh, it makes me cringe just thinking about it. But today, doctors can't see osteoarthritis until after bone damage and pain have developed. Now, I'm about to show you an x-ray that shows some very subtle signs of bone damage. So, be sure to look. This is what your x-ray might look like the first time you're diagnosed with osteoarthritis. But there's evidence that the disease begins long before that, inside the cartilage. So, why can't we just look at the cartilage to diagnose the disease? So, let's take a trip back in time and let's actually take a look. Some images of cartilage. These are magnetic resonance images or MRIs, of knee cartilage. These are all healthy people. Each scan belongs to a different subject. The different colors here represent the different ingredients that make up cartilage. And we know that three years down the line, one of these groups will receive the diagnosis of osteoarthritis, but the other group won't. And the question is, which group is which? You see, the problem is that our eyes can't seem to detect a difference between these groups of patients. Even experts can't tell what's wrong here. So does that mean that three years before bone damage develops, there's 
nothing to see in the cartilage? Or could we possibly find evidence of early disease that eludes the naked eye with the help of a computer? Ten years ago, I started studying signals. Signals are the way that computers understand and process the world. And I wanted to teach a computer to recognize patterns in medical images the same way that your personal assistant, Siri and Alexa, can recognize your voice today by using something called machine learning. The basic premise behind machine learning is to program a computer that can learn on its own with experience. So the way that it works is that we feed in the images. And whether that person goes on to develop osteoarthritis three years down the line. And the computer sifts through the images to try to determine whether there is a pattern that can differentiate osteoarthritis progressors from healthy people. In my research, I developed a technique called transport-based morphometry, which teaches the computer to learn interrelationships between pixels, rather than trying to focus on finding one particular pixel within the image. And the true elegance of this technique is that transport-based morphometry can come back and teach us the patterns that the computer has learned. OK, so at this point, you're all probably dying to know whether the computer can tell apart these images that we couldn't tell apart, right? So it turns out that on an image of knee cartilage, that the computer has never seen before, it can predict whether that person goes on to develop osteoarthritis three years down the line with 86% accuracy. <laughs> and because these machines learn with experience, they'll only get better and better as we feed in more scans. Now remember that doctors today have no way of diagnosing osteoarthritis three years prior to symptoms. Imagine what three years means in a person's life. If I knew that I would develop osteoarthritis three years from now, I would take steps today to try to stave off the disease for as long as possible. OK, now you're probably wondering, well, what is the computer seeing that we can't see, right? Well, these images are computer-generated MRIs. And the red here indicates the presence of water, which we already knew. But what we didn't know was that what the computer can use to diagnose osteoarthritis in the future is the diffusion of water. You see, to the far left, we see an image of a person who's completely healthy. And the water here is evenly distributed throughout the cartilage. On the far right, we see an image of a person who goes on to develop osteoarthritis three years from now, and the water pools to the center of the cartilage. Just as potholes in the road accumulate water, the pooling of water suggests that there's a weakening of cartilage at that location. And it's incredible that this is the first time we can see early evidence of disease in the cartilage, even though it's been there the whole time on literally millions of scans that physicians have seen. We can finally see these changes through the eyes of a computer, teaching us what to look for. Now you're probably wondering, why do we need to look through the eyes of a computer? Why couldn't we see this on our own? To which I would answer that, remember, that everyone's knee is a little bit different. So when you look at a picture of knee cartilage, your eyes become saturated with the normal variability that can happen from person to person. But when the computer looks at the image, it can really zero in on even subtle differences in water content. So this is why the computer can recognize early signs of disease while your eyes can't. Cracking this puzzle was no easy feat. Um, Science is built on accumulated knowledge, and I'd like to thank my collaborators and colleagues. I could not have done this without them. Early detection of osteoarthritis was a great starting place for me, because for me it highlighted the power of machine learning to be able to push our human capabilities. We could finally find things that we never knew to look for, and we never even knew existed. 
and to think of the myriad diseases where we can apply this technique. Today, we don't understand how many diseases arise and develop, particularly in the brain. Alzheimer's, autism, schizophrenia are examples. But in the future, we may be able to understand how these diseases start and identify new targets for treatment. Today, we can't diagnose diseases until after symptoms develop, and by then it might be too late. In the future, we might be able to diagnose diseases before they develop, and we might have the opportunity to halt the disease before it even begins. I'm working to get this technology in the hands of your doctors within the next 10 years. But for that, what needs to happen? First, because these machines learn with experience, we need vast amounts of patient data to ensure that these computers become smarter and more accurate in diagnosing. Fortunately, this computer lives in our hospitals today. Second, we need to build a community of people who can accelerate this work and bring benefits to patients sooner rather than later. Just as in 1895 with the first Röntgenogram, the face of medicine is about to change again because this is the first time we can see not the visible, but the invisible changes in the human body that allow us to diagnose a disease even before it develops. Now all we need is curiosity and an open mind. Thank you.